Smitey a hole for embarrassing my wife by taking our son from her in front of her family? So I, 30 male, have a five-year-old with my wife of six years, Chloe, 28 female. Never had a big issue between us. Truly is my best friend and someone until recently I trusted fully. So, I do not have a relationship with my mom, and I haven't since I was 15. Without going into all the details, my mom broke up the family to marry some dude. I told her when I was 15 that if she chooses this road, then there wouldn't be coming back. She was making a selfish decision and needed to think about it. She chooses to stay with a dude and move in with him. I haven't seen her since. I told her last time we spoke, my 18th birthday, that my kid will never know her and that is my wish. She broke up with this dude a few years ago and tried getting in contact with me. When I blocked her, she tried my wife, who I informed of the situation and she agreed that she would never contact my mom, which was hard for my wife to accept because she doesn't have her mom anymore. My wife was pushy at first about me opening up to reconciling, but when she learned I wasn't budging, she learned to accept it. So, this weekend, I'm fixing the ring doorbell we have and finally learned how to see the old footage. That is when I see my mom on the camera. I go back months and see her more and more. During work, she was stopping by for hours at a time. My wife on the camera letting her in. I texted my wife asking why she let my mom see our son. No response. Hours go by, nothing back. I knew they were at a family day thing. So I printed pictures of the videos, wrote a letter that stated how upset I was, and laid out my plans to go stay at my dad's with our son till I knew I could trust her again. Then I drove to the party, walked into the backyard, said hello to everyone. I made sure nobody could tell I was mad. But I grabbed my son, walked up to my wife and handed her the letter. Told her to check her phone and read the letter privately. I told my son we had to leave, quietly packed up his stuff and headed to the car. My wife read the letter in this time and ran over to me, asking if we could talk. I said it wasn't the time or place, that she could call once it got to my dad's. She then caused a scene crying and begging to talk. I didn't want a scene, so I left. I got to my dad's and then we talked. She's saying I'm an a-hole for where I did this. I said she's the one who broke down in front of everyone. I didn't cause a scene. She did. I tried making it as low-key as possible. She chose to not answer her phone. She chose to read a letter in front of everyone when I said not to, and she's the one who cried and begged for a ride home. So she embarrassed herself with her actions. I've been staying at my dad's since Saturday, and we plan on coming home sometime this weekend. But I don't think I need to apologize. But I'm still being called a-hole. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not a hole. That is a very deep betrayal. As someone who was estranged from my father for some time, this would be utterly devastating. And I'm so sorry. I hope she thinks very deeply about what she's done and does everything in her power to regain your trust. Something I haven't seen many people mention? The kid is five. He's old enough to talk. Sure, he's not waxing lyrical on the merits of Chaucer over Shakespeare, but he's old enough to be able to say, Daddy, I saw Granny today. But in the last few months, the kid hasn't let anything slip. Which, to me, suggests he has been coached to keep it secret. That hadn't even crossed my mind. I'm estranged from my mom and if my partner was letting her into our home without my knowledge, I would immediately leave, let alone seeing our child without my knowledge. And then that adds even more layers to the whole thing. How did the kid not let anything slip? Had to have been coached, which is playing with freaking fire. Everyone sucks here. Sure, you made it as low-key as possible. Apart from the fact where despite your son not being in any immediate danger that would warrant urgent intervention on your part, you just had to do this in public, instead of waiting for her to get home. And don't act like it's all on her for not wanting to wait to read your damn letter to figure out what the hell was going on, or subsequently freaking out. Let's face it, you wanted her publicly humiliated. And while one can argue whether or not she deserved that for blatantly disregarding your wishes regarding contact with your mom, if you want this marriage to survive the situation, admit you acted out of anger. So you can focus on the actual problem and see if that's something you two can fix or not. I think you're definitely reaching. Did you just glaze over the part where he had already texted her multiple times before writing his letter and going over there to get a son? He might not have handled it perfectly, but saying he wanted her publicly humiliated is far stretch. He doesn't need to apologize for his feelings. She lied to him and disregarded his wishes for months. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not forgiving my parents when they tried to force institutionalize me? I-42 female started having very severe panic attacks. I'm talking loud, long, messy panic attacks. 
My husband and I have been married for 19 years and have three children, 18, 17, and 13 at a time. It obviously was extremely difficult for all of us. January 2021, I went on disability and entered into an intensive outpatient program to help sort out why I was having these panic attacks and how to prevent them and spent 12 weeks in a program. I was trying to do right by my family and do what was best for me. My IOP ended on Thursday, April 29th, and my husband and my dad asked me if I was better. I was caught off guard by this as I was still processing what I went through in my program and protectively replied no because I wasn't ready to share how I felt. On Monday, May 3rd, my husband told me I needed to either go to our cabin for a week or be institutionalized, and that my father and mother would back him and they would kick me out of the house. We rent for my parents. If I didn't go, I was understandably confused AF, even more so when I called my father in tears to confirm this. Apparently, they thought I was bipolar, but that's no excuse, especially as I was being very closely monitored by the medical professionals. After an hour of driving, I had to pull over as I was hysterical. It took my BFF, who is an MD, to convince my husband that not only was this not okay, but there wouldn't even be a program that would take me, as I certainly wasn't a threat to myself or others. This whole thing was driven my mother. My husband really, really doesn't understand much about mental health or anything medical. I was mortified, but I went home. During this time, my hand had been going numb, on and off, but figured it was due to the stress of the situation. On Friday, May 7th, my whole arm went dead due to stroke. It turns out I had a disease in my carotid arteries, but a stressful event pushed my brain over the edge, so to speak, causing the stroke. I told my extended family, brothers, and parents about the stroke over Zoom, as I was still emotionally gutted by their attempt to force institutionalize me. I told them that they were not welcome at my house, for the time being, as their presence was highly triggering after what they did. My husband feels horrible about what happened, entered therapy, and has made a lot of progress. My parents, on the other hand, refused to apologize, as they only had good intentions, which is very hurtful and have repeatedly said they aren't sorry they did it. My brothers all think I'm the a-hole, as I won't forgive my parents and let it go so the family can all hang out again. I don't feel safe when I'm with any of them anymore. I really can't see how I'm the a-hole. So please, I want honest opinions. Am I the a-hole? Should I just let this go? Some added info. No, I did not have a history of panic attacks. It was a very sudden onset. At the same time, I dropped 30 pounds without trying. It was very scary. All of my symptoms were from the disease that helped create the perfect storm for my stroke. No amount of meds or therapy could fix it, as it wasn't actually a mental health problem. It is now, though, after what my family put me through. Many people have expressed concern for my children, and I want you all to know that I appreciate that. I promise I try to keep them as far away from my panic attacks as possible. I would isolate in the bathroom and scream into a pillow. I would often get to the point that I couldn't feel anything around me, and they were terrifying for me and the rest of my household. My mother called CPS, again because she thought I was manic, and CPS saw that we were literally doing everything we possibly could. Given the situation, they were very kind and supportive. The worst things in the world are done with the best of intentions. Dr. Alan Grant, not the whole. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Really old saying. Not day home. You can't forgive people who never ask forgiveness. Thank you. That's exactly how I feel. More than once, I literally begged them to apologize, even if they didn't mean it, to help me get past this. I am honestly surprised you forgave your husband. For me, that would be divorce worthy. If he knew I was sick and struggling, it essentially kicked me out of my own house threatening that either I leave my house when I was vulnerable or he would try to institutionalize me or make me homeless, I would change the locks the next time he was away, file for divorce, and look to move somewhere my parents definitely wouldn't know. Also, you have tenant rights, especially if you pay rent. Don't let anyone bully and threaten you. Kicking you out is illegal. Honestly, I'm still considering it. My current goal is my health, my kids, and getting back to work FT. Then I'll decide what to do about my husband. He may not be in the picture long term anymore. Next story. Am I the a hole for pointing out the role my sister played in her toxic relationship? My sister, Eleanor, 26 female, dated her ex boyfriend Scott, 30 male, for a little over a year in 2017. My parents, the died 27 male, got to watch their relationship play out from the sidelines. And it definitely wasn't the healthiest. 
Scott was struggling hard with alcohol addiction and would raise his voice when he got drunk. Eleanor seemed more interested in provoking these situations than providing actual compassion and care. It was toxic all the way around, and they both played parts in it. During their relationship, Scott and I talked often. I would reach out to him whenever Eleanor would come stay at our parents' house after a fight. Sometimes the text conversations and phone calls weren't even fully coherent, but he would thank me sometime later if he remembered our interaction. I think I might have been one of the only people he had in his corner. I was in Eleanor's corner too, but witnessing her not limiting her alcohol consumption around Scott despite knowing his struggles was really leaving a bad taste in my mouth. Following their breakup and a downward spiral from Scott, I was eventually able to reconnect with him. I encouraged him to get help, and I stood by him throughout his sobriety journey. As of right now, he's going on two years alcohol-free. He's my closest friend and my confidant. We're life partners, and I feel lucky that I get to be a part of his support system. Any support system is exactly what he needs, but he has not been welcomed at any family events of mine since the breakup despite his sobriety. I've taken him to some, but my parents and my sister have made it abundantly clear that they will not speak to him, or do more than just tolerate his presence. This all came to a head this past weekend. I told my family I wanted to talk to them at the family brunch my parents host occasionally. Once there, I tried to initiate a conversation about forgiveness, but Eleanor basically wouldn't allow it. She would interrupt me by saying things Scott had previously said to her. I tried to ignore her and have a productive talk with my parents, but eventually I snapped and told her that if she had supported Scott in the way he had needed, and not selfishly continued to drink in front of him despite the very obvious alcoholism struggles, then maybe things would have been different. I left but have received text from my parents and her about how out of line it was, and how bad of a brother I am. Am I the a-hole? Edited to add, I am not saying Scott's addiction was my sister's fault or putting any blame on her. I'm also not excusing his actions. I'm simply saying that both sides of this relationship were toxic and I wish forgiveness was an option. You're the a-hole. He had a problem, not her. Congratulations on fixing him. You doing that and then dating your sister's ex-boyfriend who was toxic and abusive to her says a lot about you. You're the selfish one. Edit. My question is also why you felt so compelled to console and help a stranger mistreating your sister? The one arising the issues, leaving your sister on the sidelines and blaming her? Very strange behavior. Perfectly stated. The pride about fixing Scott and judging his sister harshly was so evident in his post. In addition, I'm skeptical about anyone's attempt to be the mediator and force forgiveness. You're the a-hole for initiating this weird relationship with your sister's boyfriend at a time and current ex. If I was her, I'd cut you off. Your sister comes home after a fight, needing support. And instead of giving it to her, you support the guy she fought with? I don't know why you would expect them to accept your guy's relationship. You've clearly betrayed your sister. Opie said he and Scott are dating now. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my father-in-law he can starve if he wants because I didn't care? My husband and I, both 26, recently hosted a family dinner to announce our pregnancy. It's important to add that my husband doesn't have a close relationship with his father, but we keep him around because he still has three minor siblings that we love and care for. My father-in-law is the type of person that still thinks women should serve men at dining times. Like he has to be served first because he's the breadwinner and stuff like that. We usually don't care since we mostly ignore them. However, this time my family was present and we consider he fooled around and found out. My dad is my favorite person in the world. My mom died when I was little and my dad took care of my older sister and I. They're the only family I have left. At dinner, both my husband and I cooked things we knew both of our families would like. The first issue started when my father-in-law tried to sit at one of the heads of the table, and my husband said no. He sat at one and I sat at the other. Me with my father and sister to either side, and him with his brothers, so my father-in-law was kind of in the middle and didn't like it. The second problem and the cause of all of this is that everyone was kind of serving themselves. However, my dad has a damaged nerve on his right hand, and he struggles when holding spoons slash forks and such. My sister bought him a Parkinson's friendly cutlery set that he brings around, but a big spoon for serving is still hard for him, so I offered to serve him his plate while my sister served him his drink and then we all sat to eat and chat. Three or four minutes after that, my father-in-law asks out loud, is no one going to serve me my plate? And my husband looks at him confused and says, no, we don't do that here. And my mother-in-law just gets up in a hurry and takes his plate, but my father-in-law says no, 
and that the hostess did it for her father, so she can do it for me. And I say, yes, my father who has an injured hand, you are fine. He says that he won't eat then and I just shrugged and said that he could starve and I didn't care. He leaves with my mother-in-law. And while everyone agrees with me, my own father said that it was a disrespectful thing to say and I should apologize for the way I did it. So, am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You didn't instigate the situation. He was being ridiculous and you declined to entertain his behavior. Exactly. Not the a-hole. Your father-in-law on the other hand is an entitled a-hole. Not the a-hole. Your father-in-law needs to know not everyone follows his sexist views. And in someone else's home, he doesn't get to act that way. If his own wife wants to be his servant, that's her choice. In your home, you can make the call, and his attitude is messed up. You need to make sure he doesn't treat you the same way he treats his wife. Look, I don't think there's anything wrong with making your man a plate. I grew up watching that, but the difference is, my aunts and grandma weren't forced to do it. It was something they liked doing. Hell, I say cooking for you is how I show love, but if I met a man like father-in-law, I wouldn't serve him a damn thing. Like you said, his attitude is messed up. Not only you are not the a-hole, you're a freaking legend. Screw that guy. If he holds such traditional values, he'd respect the house rules of the house he was in. But he didn't, because he doesn't. He's just sexist and...